I would forget to clean something, but I was getting yelled at for things I knew for a fact I cleaned. My other problem was that when my coworkers would forget the same exact things, she wouldn't yell at them, but would just say, try to remember, or something along those lines. Eventually, P got other coworkers to lie so that she could report me to the owner. Many days, I came right from school and would be wearing jeans. P left right when I got there, so after I clocked in and counted the drawer, I would go and change into my work pants. Well, other coworkers would lie and tell her I never changed. After this, I began taking pictures and time stamping them. This worked for a little while, but then my coworkers would say I changed back into jeans after that picture. And when it came to cleaning, she would say I didn't clean it well enough, etc. All of these would get turned into the owner, but she wouldn't fire me because they were so desperate for people and no one wanted to work there. I wonder why. Eventually I quit because I had a job for the summer that gave me a lot more hours. In my summer job, I made the same amount of money in seven weeks that I made in a year at the last place. Right after I left, I learned why P wanted me gone so bad. P hired her son, my ex-friend, because he was too lazy to work a job where he couldn't sit around all day. That made me mad. But what also made me mad is that they wouldn't give me my last paycheck. We were paid in cash. I sent multiple emails and text messages to P and the owner that reminded them and then threatened legal action. Being a high schooler, I don't believe they thought I would do anything. How wrong they were. Well, there were many reasons I was about this, so I decided I'd document every single thing about that place. These include 8 plus hour work days with no breaks or lunch, both of which are required in my state, rats in the basement, ant infestation, fake security cameras, he faking the amount of money we had to pay her son and daughter for under the table work, not fixing things like building framework, mold, etc., allowing temperatures to go above and below the legal limit. On bad days, it was above 100 or below 50 inside. P giving themselves a raise, even though they already made more than anyone else there. Selling client information. P compiling clients for another worker to take with them to a new company. Usually not illegal, but the way they went about it was. I don't remember the exact details. Not doing anything about harassment and not paying workers. There'd be days where we didn't have enough money in the drawer, and the owner and or P would be too lazy to go to the bank, so they would just straight up not pay us. Not only this, but prior to me leaving, I recorded some of the mistreatment from P. Believe it or not, I even got them to admit to making false write-ups on me. There was more, but I can't remember what else right now. Anyways, I compiled all of this and sent it in an email to OSHA. It went down. In the end, both P and the owner were served with some hefty fines, and P is even facing jail time right now for fraud. The owner had to shut down their business and sell it. I don't know if the owner is facing any jail time. I emailed every spa within 50 miles, so the owner, P, and some coworkers had been blacklisted from working within an hour of where we're located. I never did receive my last payment. It wasn't worth going to court over, but what came out of it was so much better. My taxes pay your salary. No, they do not. This happened three years ago, but my friend reminded me of it yesterday, so I thought I'd share. It was the middle of June and my first weekend off in quite a long time. I'd been giving my friend a never-ending rain check of promising to teach her to fish. Our schedules finally line up, weather's perfect, it's fishing time. We arrive at a local lake. It's the type where you don't need a fishing license, just a pass for the lake. Money goes to the city. We buy our passes from the concession stand and head back to my car to get the gear. I brought three setups, one for me, one for a friend, and just in case. It's a really busy Saturday morning, lots of people. We do a mini hike across the lake to get to our spot and get to fishing. Friend learns quickly. We catch a few before the sun's all the way up. We're pumped how well the day is going and decide to take a lunch break when it starts to get hot. At about 11, we take the stuff back to my car we chill, eat, hydrate, and head back. While we're walking back, a group of kids break away from their families to follow us around. They were all boys, four of them. Three of them were probably around eight to 11, and the fourth is maybe six. I'm thinking they just want to watch us fish, and they likely told their parents where they were going, so I don't even think about it. We get back to our spot, but the kids are trying to follow us down the hill. The top of the hill has a trail. If you're careful, you can climb down to reach a small landing that's close to the water's edge. 
it was 